Ponyland, in and of itself, is not particularly relevant as a geography, but exceptionally relevant as a frame for its residents, a community of ponies around whom the action of the television series My Little Pony circulates, and their human friends, in whom we are not interested. The diverse landscapes we see in My Little Pony define the histories and qualities of the ponies, and are therefore an effective entry point into their world. Central Ponyland, which serves as a sort of home locus for the ponies, is largely modeled after an English garden aesthetic, as channeled through graphic inspirations from academic painting and Walt Disney. It is a landscape on the borders between wilderness and control, a sort of aestheticized unruliness. In this frame, one can see quite evidently the influence of a certain framing that puts in relief the English garden principle. The wild, undisguised death of the leafless trees on the left edge of the frame is put into conversation with the wildflowers on the bottom right, which are organized in color and formation as if planted. These apparently clear references to certain image histories function, primarily, to establish languages of beauty and color that are of paramount importance to the My Little Pony program. It is important to note as well that these references place the ponies in multiple cultural frames. First, frames of nostalgia for certain moments in aesthetic history, and second, and perhaps most importantly, socio-political frames, notably that of a white majority of European descent in the United States. In contrast to these referential spaces, the borders of Ponyland are replete with imaginary landscapes. Here again we are given opportunities to explore the program's signature color and texture games. Additionally, these landscapes can work to again put in relief certain cultural fetishes, as can be seen here in the fantastic vision of wealth provided by a desert in which grow cacti made of purple diamonds. Community connections are of exceptional importance to the ponies. Their community is organized around a central location, Paradise Estate, notably painted in pink, which houses the adult ponies and their human friends. In addition, we see from time to time annexes to Paradise Estate, in particular a nursery, and an ice cream shop shaped like a shoe. The ponies are exceptionally social. The majority of exchanges are realized on the level of companionship, advice, and the mutual guardianship of children. The history of the children is one of the primary mysteries of Ponyland. As the ponies are exclusively female, it is impossible to say how the children, present at multiple ages, are produced. Of equal mystery is the production of the trappings of daily living, such as food. Though we often see the ponies gardening flowers, there is no evidence of wheat fields or sugar plantations that might supply their seemingly insatiable appetite for pastry. Indeed, the economy of Ponyland as a whole is left exceptionally unclear. In all of the episodes created between 1986 and 1987, there is only one episode in which one sees a single pony with a source of employment, Scoops, who works as an ice cream vendor. The ponies can be morphologically separated into three groups. Earth ponies are the most closely related to the ponies that you and I might encounter at circuses, which is to say, just tiny horses. Pegasus ponies are, in accordance with Greek legend, equipped with a pair of wings that give them the power to fly. Unicorn ponies are similarly equipped with a mythological horn, which gives them a diverse range of powers, from teleportation to, as we see here, making bubbles. From time to time, we see other, rarer evolutions of ponies, such as the baby sea ponies, adapted to living in water. It is important to note that these different morphologies of pony correspond to different lines of the Hasbro My Little Pony figurine products, and that a spectator of My Little Pony could, if a certain morphology pleased her, purchase a doll in that form. Aside from these morphologies of form, the second basic differentiating aspect to the ponies is color. The color combinations of body, mane, and eyes correspond to the personalities and preferences of the individual pony. For Posy, the gardening pony, the soft pinks and yellows mimic the care with which she tends her garden. In contrast, 
the harsher and more vibrant combination of orange and green mark the feistier and sportier masquerade. In Fizzy, we see two critical permutations of the typical pony. First, the multicolored mane, meant surely to appeal to the sensibilities of 1980s American fashion, and secondly, the jeweled eyes. While revealing aspects of personality, the colors of the ponies also serve as a guide to preference. The range of colors are meant to appeal to a wide range of preferences, albeit nearly always within the range of colors that are presumed to appeal to young women between the ages of three and eight. For the My Little Pony spectator, one of the greatest pleasures of watching the program is selecting one's favorite pony. As I was looking through the archive of My Little Pony images, I became fixated on one pony in particular, a Pegasus pony named Paradise. I was drawn mostly to her coloring, orange and white, which I like to wear myself. Otherwise, it's hard to piece together a personality profile for her, even after extensive viewing, but I always like her. I like her here because she's reading to a group, and I like books, and admire as well her place in the community. I like her here because she looks industrious. I like her here because she looks like a fairy. I like her here because she looks sad.